Europe is among the least developed countries that is faced with the severe consequences of climate change. Climate change in Liberia is characterized with erratic weather pattern, slight increase in temperature, frequent tropical storms, and the increase in sea level rise. All these climate hazards are having severe impacts on the economic development of the country. At the Environmental Protection Agency, we work with relevant ministries, agencies, as well as international partners to, to address the issue of climate change. In this light, we welcome the intervention of the National Adaptation Plan of Action. The NAP, as you may know, is intended to address Liberia's medium and long-term adaptation needs. We welcome the support from the Green Climate Fund. As you may know, Liberia has a unique portion within the international com uh, community as it relates to the sequestrations of carbon. The forest resources of Liberia constitute a significant portion in sub-Saharan Africa in terms of carbon mitigation. This is what we are working with relevant partners through the REP Plus process in terms of how Liberia forest resources can help to mitigate the issue of climate change. Using support from the Green Climate Funded National Adaptation Plan, which is a NAP, Liberia has made significant gains in its effort to combat climate change. The country was able to finalize and launch its uh, national climate change and response strategy, which together with our nationally determined contribution to the Paris Agreement has provided clear direction on where we want to go as a country and the efforts required to achieve a long-term adaptation. Now at this point, I also like to say we have also developed important knowledge and products, including the scientific-based evidence needed to support adaptation planning to different climate vulnerability and risk assessment conducted for key sectors that were identified. The NAP has also enabled us to forge a stronger partnership with academic institutions like the University of Liberia and the Cardinal University, thus enabling us to close the knowledge gap that we have experienced in our country. Through our partnership with the private sector, we are beginning to identify new opportunities for private sector because we believe private sector involvement in the fight of climate change is a seeding the vat. Climate change poses significant risk to many aspects of our existence in terms of environment and ultimately our national development strategy. Right now we have already developed guidelines for mainstreaming climate change into our national development plan and our national budget. We have also done an assessment of our climate financing infrastructure and we are building, working on building capacities to enhance that area. We have introduced programs in environmental studies and climate change at the University of Liberia at the undergraduate and graduate levels. Because our national agenda is based on our national development plan, the PAPD, we are right now undertaking a review of the PAPD within the context of the COVID. And we also are using that opportunity to see how we can mainstream climate change into the PAPD to ensure that it's a holistic approach that we are taking for addressing climate change intervention. Despite the challenges that we have faced along the way, we are already beginning to see our donors supporting us to ensure that we have the capacity to meet those challenges. So we are working on building donor confidence. Pretty much we're looking at strengthening the implementation and fiduciary systems, environmental and social safeguards in monitoring and evaluating climate change intervention. The Ministry of Mines and Energy through the NAP project has been able to conduct uh, climate vulnerability and risk assessment studies targeted at gauging future probable changes in the environment, mainly the coastal zone. In furtherance of our desire to protect residents living in the vulnerable coastal zone, 
we have lunch, the Monrovia Climate Change uh, Resilient Project. Under this project, uh, in last year and part of this year, we were able to install 1,025 meters of revetments, otherwise known as sea walls. The installation of this defense mechanism was able to protect a renowned high school within the area known as the D2 High School. When this initiative was completed, uh, we saw a surge in enrollment in the school due to increased confidence of the protection of the school. Other structures, uh, homes, were also uh, protected from sea erosion. Lately, uh, the President, uh, His Excellency Dr. George Manewia, who is very, very passionate about disadvantaged and impoverished populations, in the country, instructed the Ministry of Mines and Energy to do a special intervention to install an additional um, 300 meters of seawalls. That project is currently ongoing. During the stock taking exercise for the formulation of Liberia's NAFs, Inadequate human capacity and lack of data were identified as key barriers to climate change adaptation. The project has conducted various studies that have generated information and knowledge products to fill the knowledge gaps in country while providing local and international training for more than 200 staff of government agencies. Many of the NAV scholars, including myself, have started to provide mentorship training to other experts within our agencies. We envision that we as NAV scholars and all of those we've met her will become the next generation of climate change adaptation champions. The challenge now that we have in lies within our ability to manage and retain the capacity acquired through the project. We've also learned that partnership with the media it's very important in the fight of climate change and climate change adaptation. Why the media has been very useful in channeling climate change communication with stakeholders within Liberia, it has also played a significant role in raising awareness and gradually shaping public opinion around climate change issues in Liberia. Some challenges encountered in the implementation of the NAB project I, limited information on climate change and vulnerability studies, low institutional capacity on climate change adaptation and disaster risk reduction studies, lessons learned from the implementation of the project include, but not limited to, the whole community approach. The project is for the people. In implementing the project, it was very important that the community be involved, that local expertise of the community was very important. And the project also made use of gender inclusiveness. Through the implementation of the NAD project, we have realized that community who feel the brunt of the climate change and disaster impact are the key people that we should look after. They play a lead role in the implementation of this process. While there are many to be said, but I want us to realize that their capacity uh, need to be built. There's seriously a capacity gap. Community people have traditional knowledge in the process. We should not overlook this process. The traditional knowledge is important in the national adaptation process. And the experience that the community bring on board is also huge. A lesson learned is we have able to uh, increase the number of local experts as it relates to tackling climate change in the country and thereby reducing the number of our reliance on the number of international experts that are becoming in the country. With this, we would like to thank the Green Climate Fund uh, through the NAPS project for establishing a program uh, to help 
in knowledge management and sharing in the country. Thank you very much. As part of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change and its Kyoto Protocol, Liberia has implemented various initiatives towards the fulfillment of specific obligation to ensuring sustainability. This includes the preparation of, of initial national communication, uh, the second national communication, and the National Adaptation Program of Action, NAPA. The NAP project has identified set of specific adaptation strategies and action plans that are needed in order to enhance resilience both at the national and local level. Through our GCF, Green Climate Fund Readiness Support, we have developed a new country program document that outlines our key priority initiatives for funding. Given the magnitude of Liberia's susceptibility, there is need to invest in adaptation measures. We are currently developing a national climate change investment plan that aims to increase climate change investment in Liberia. Liberia's NAF project has prioritized actions that allow the country to meet objectives of the three international agenda. Climate vulnerability and risk assessment and data generated from the NAP have informed disaster risk reduction and the nationally determined contribution revision process that is currently ongoing. We have been using existing planning and consultation mechanisms and combining stakeholders' engagement processes for the NAPs. DRR and NDC, which have all proved to be efficient. The NAP has contributed to key SDG targets. Our support to Liberia uh, in terms of sustainable development and climate um, change, which go hand in hand, is mainly to domesticate international protocols and make sure uh, we have strategies and plans for implementation um, in Liberia. One of which, uh, one of the key areas of support is the graduate program we introduced at the University of Liberia. This is the pioneer, is a pioneer one and is so far going well. And what we've done with all the support we've given government, there are key, key focus we've made. Uh, we've made sure whatever response this country is taking is uh, gender sensitive and we've also prioritized the poor and the vulnerable. But all this work could not have been done without collaboration and support forced from Green Climate Fund, uh, the government of Liberia through EPA, uh, Ministry of Finance. These are our partners uh, we've been working work, uh, with all the way to this level. We hope to continue this collaboration. Liberia's vulnerability to the adverse effects of climate change makes adaptation a national priority that has contracted commitment at the highest level of this government. Our country's mitigation efforts and potential due to the presence of the largest remaining portion of the Upper Guinea forest is something that we are determined and committed to harnessing to ensure that Liberia continues to contribute to global efforts in reducing greenhouse gas emissions. We are hopeful that the climate change policy and response strategy, which we developed in 2018, along with other efforts of our international partners, will combine to facilitate the opening of funding windows that will assist us in addressing issues related to climate change and the environment. We believe that as a government, that the issue of climate change will now become a central part of our economic development planning because the view is that climate change affects every aspect of our economic life. And so our national development plan in the PAPD that has been revised after two years or so will now include a substantial part of climate change, which we believe is the next way, is the new frontier, is the new normal that can drive economic development. Because we believe that climate change or climate sensitive investments are important for economic development. This is why the commitment at the highest level for climate change actions continue to be stronger and will remain strong.